What's up, guys? Welcome to Building with the Masons. It's your girl, Sheika. And your boy, Anthony. We're back. We're back. And today we're talking about fitness and health within your relationship and marriage. Listen, guys. Fitness, health, marriage, relationships, all of that stuff. We in all of that. So before we get started, I want to read a little statistic to y'all. This is about married couples. So when you're dating, y'all going to the gym together, all of that, that's cool. It's cute. But, but when you're married and life starts lifing. And you start having kids. Ooh, that's what we're talking about today. So uh-huh. here it is. For married couples, waistlines could affect happiness. Mm. New research shows that newlyweds who report feeling satisfied with their marriage tend to gain weight soon after they get married. Nice. While those who ponder divorce tend to stay slimmer. Oh, because they about to be outside. 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 So what what is happening? We must be hitting the market or thinking about hitting the market soon. Not so us. We want to make sure. Yeah, not us. No, not us. But I do stay in that gym. And I do too. Because you got to stay market ready. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, so that's a whole nother subject. But I mean, seriously though, no, that's I want to I want to stay looking good for not just for you, but for myself. You know, when I, I, when I put like, on clothes, I want to look good in my clothes. I'm, I'm going to tell you what's oh, you crazy. You want to stay market ready. We're going to have a conversation about like this. <laughs> look, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Listen to this, though, because this is crazy. Like, just okay. think of, like, the evolution of our relationship, like, from the beginning. Yeah. And how I think everybody, if you don't know, like, I'm telling you now, like, Sheikah was a collegiate athlete. She reminds me of it. All the time. All the time that she she ran track and for a major country. school. For a major school. Like, yes, yes. she did. All right. On so a check scholarship. Out. That once we got married and moved in together, she was still mm-hmm. on that habit of exercising every single day. And your boy, mm-hmm. I was in a video game Olympics. All I did yeah. was sit on the couch, couch on potato. the floor. In my, I was a couch potato. He was a couch potato. I, I kind of was a couch potato. Yeah. I played a lot of video games, sat in my gaming chair all day while Sheikah would leave me and go to the gym. And it's mm-hmm. so crazy thinking back now. Mm-hmm. Like I remember vividly sitting on the couch. And you would come up and say, babe, do you want to go to the gym? And, was, and I'd be like, no, I'm, nah, I'm in the middle of a Madden game. I'm in the middle right of a game. Right. Like, and you're not shutting Madden off. <laughs> so it's crazy how the evolution of, of things. But when we first got married, like mm-hmm. that was me. Like I was comfortable. Like mm-hmm. we're married. I didn't feel like that was anything that I needed to go and work on at the time. Right. And I when and mm-hmm. I actually gained weight when we first got married as well. It was my fault. Yeah. I remember like going back visiting parents and your mom specifically was like, you know, Anthony likes his women slim, and I'm like, ah. I like so she slim. must, so she must, <laughs> so she she noticed right off back that I was having a little pudge in the front. So, yes, and it and it's real. Like you do end up. Well, you're going to end gain. up taking like I, I think that one way or the other, one of the two in the relationship mm-hmm. are going to end up taking on the habit of the other. Right. And I think that that's what happened. Like you saw that I was couch potatoing Mm -hmm. and while fitness was a priority for you, it became less and less of a priority because it was not my priority. Right. Okay. So now moving forward. So from there, you, I get pregnant and have our first, have our first kid gain 40 to 50 pounds every time I get pregnant, sometimes 60 Mm -hmm. and you gain weight with me. Oh yeah. So, oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> and so from there, that's life happening and life lifing mm-hmm. um, when it comes to fitness and health. And I always had some type of goal after, you know, having a baby, like the first, after the first kid, I, I did, I did a lot of workout videos. After the second kid, I actually trained for a marathon and ran a full marathon when our second kid was six months old. And I wasn't training for that marathon. He wasn't training I, for at, that. At all. Like Is, I <laughs> sat on the couch again. <laughs> and then when she ran that marathon, that was in um that was in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. When she got to the 12, 13 mile marker, yes. I took a bus. To meet me there, to meet cheer me there. on, and then you went and ate breakfast. I was and then <laughs> And then you came back and met me at the at the finish line and, and cheer me on through the finish line. I have some choice words for myself on that that <laughs> I will say for myself, but just know that I have evolved from that and I would never take a bus oh, to my go gosh. and meet her there. Yes. So, so from there, our third kid, you decided I'm not gaining any weight with you. I'm going to bodybuild. Yeah. So I think that that was really important for me to not only find something that would keep me from going back into 
being that couch potato those first two times, but it was always something that I had wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I figured at that point, I was like, you know what? I could gain 20, 30 pounds with you now, or I could learn how to become someone that was a fitness enthusiast. And then I could pass that on to you, even though it's something that you've done. Like, I I feel like this go round, like you've lost weight Mm -hmm. rapidly. I wouldn't say rapidly. I mean, but you, it was at a decent pace. Mm -hmm. But I felt like by me getting that knowledge, I could accelerate it for you mm. um, coming out of this one. So, like, you would share with me the fact that I would be working out, you know, twice well, a day I worked sometimes. Out. I worked out while I was pregnant for, at the six, beginning, this, for, at the beginning. for at least the first six months. But then I had and to consult stop. a doctor if you do decide that you yeah. want to do any type of workout. Um, but and I you're had pregnant. to stop because of the doctor. <clears throat> the doctor told me no more working out once I hit six months. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that that was probably for me like the the one of the the driving forces of doing it. I didn't want to gain weight, but then I was also like, let me get educated Mm -hmm. so that this go around, it could be quicker for you without Mm -hmm. having to pay like a trainer or somebody to do it, which you still have a trainer. I do. But I help you on the diet side of things. Mr. Accountability, you sure do. And I appreciate you. Because remember, muscles, they are built in the gym, but they're really, all of that is done. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. Abs are built in the kitchen. So, yes, and I appreciate you on that. And I've always given myself grace when I have kids, women out there who are who have kids or are pregnant. Give yourself grace because it takes about nine months to put that weight on. And it's going to take you about nine months to take that weight off. OK, so you have to give yourself grace when it comes to losing weight and just love the body that you're in in that moment because your body did something so amazing. Right. So that's how I always feel about it when I gain weight, when I have kids, that I'm just going to love the body that I'm in until I get to where I want to be. All right, cool. So now that's just one example of in a relationship how if Mm -hmm. you are one person's working out, the other one is not, cannot. Right. Their journey is going to be a little tougher. Right. Um, But I think it's funny because, like, we actually had this conversation in the gym. Yeah. And it was more so geared around towards like, because there's a lot of competitors in my gym when it, uh, that that body build. And we talk about like the struggles, like mm-hmm. in this competition here, right at the end, the day before competition, you know what she could decided to do? What? She decided to fry chicken. And it was so good. And your mom and dad loved it She so decided much. to fry chicken <laughs> less than 12 hours out from when my competition was. And at this point. It was not on purpose. Whole house smelling like chicken. It was. I had I'm to sorry. lock myself in a room. He, you did. I literally had you to did. lock myself in a room to not even be in the. So in, my in question the, to you is, if if there's a, a partic- if there's a male or female, whichever or your significant other is on a fitness journey, do you expect for your the the partner to be in a fitness journey as well? Like just because you're out here bodybuilding doesn't mean I have to. I can't eat pizza and ice cream and French fries or burgers or whatever. Like I gotta eat quinoa and. Uh, and baked chicken because you're eating it? She's naming quinoa and baked chicken because she's eating quinoa and, and baked, baked chicken, chicken for dinner right every now. night. Huh? Um, I would say that would not be my expectation. No, it would not but be my But I felt like it was. No, because it you're like, be... oh, so you're just going to sit here and eat that. You know, or you will look at my plate and be like, oh, that you know, that's two servings right there. That's 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 double the servings you should have. And I'm not asking you for that. I'm not yeah. asking you to, to so monitor I, my, I my meals and my food if I'm not paying Mr. Accountability to do so. Yeah, I don't I don't think that it is a matter of of like me expecting you to do that. Okay. I think that because it is new knowledge that I have gathered on mm. ways of being healthier. Mm-hmm. And if I determine by looking at your plate that you are eating three servings of a nachos or taco salad, that to me is a concern. And it's not that I expect you to participate. Mm-hmm. I want you to be conscious of what you're eating. Like with that knowledge, why? How could I allow mm-hmm. For my family to consider uh, to con- continue consuming food that way, like so, it's not. I just want I'm, I'm educating you on it, and yes, I am going to share with you my feelings and thoughts if I feel like you're eating two or three servings when it really should be one. Okay, so this is great because this is a great segue for a book called "Men Are from Mars and Women Are from Venus" by John Gray. Okay, <laughs> because I feel like. When it comes to saying these things about, you know, especially about weight, that's a sensitive subject for men and women, you know, for your spouse or your significant other to come to you and say, hey, you're getting a little, you know, a little fluffy. Right. It's a sensitive subject. So I feel like that book can really help with communication. Like for women, we want 
respect, we want validation and reassurance. So those three things. You got to respectfully come to me. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Run it back. So give me, give, were those three R's? What'd you say? No, 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 no. There was, there was, there was two R's and a B. Two R's and a B. <laughs> All right. So RVR, respect, validation. Validation and reassurance. And reassurance. Yes. So respectfully come to me and tell me, you know, however you need to tell me that I need to be working out, whether it's, hey, babe, let's go work out together. Hey, you want to join me in the gym today? You know, something like that. Um, respectfully come to me with that validation. When I do start my fitness journey, please validate me by, you know, acknowledging that my waist look a little thinner or face looking a little slim or whatever you got to do to validate that. And then reassurance. Just just reassure me that hey, you're on the right track. You're looking good. Great job, babe. Like, we need that. And that's where you'll get that book from. You will learn that communication skill, babe. Oh, R R V R. Can yes. I say something? Go ahead. Girl, your face looking slim ah. today. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, thank you. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Whatever. A little validation. A little validation. A little reassurance little that you, reassurance. you're on the right path. Yes, yeah. thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't hear your stomach growling right now, babe. You ate today? I did. On that meal plan? I did. You're doing a great job. Keep eating. Girl. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So, yeah, I mean, with this, I feel like it's very important to um, make sure that, you know, you're not only just staying fit and healthy for your significant other and looking good for them, but for yourself and your family. Right. Respect, validation, reassurance. You still on that. Wow. You still on that. I learned something. You did. No, nah, so that's dope. Mm -hmm. um, All right. So we're going to give you guys a couple of practical steps to stay healthy and fit within your relationship. Yeah, so I, I think one of the biggest things for me that even allowed for me to be here in this space was I've been doing this for nine months now, mm -hmm. but like within the last nine months on this journey, none of it would have been possible if I didn't have your support and us actually calendaring these things. Right, yes, that's big. You supporting me mm -hmm. um, was by far the biggest piece of that, which also allows for me to be able to support you on your fitness journey. Right. Your spouse has to support you especially if there's a, a family dynamic, mm -hmm. three children, a nine month old mm -hmm. and two kids that are in school plus business. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for any of those things to stop it from happening. But exactly. because of the support, not only does it make me want to support you more, but then because we have a mutual understanding that nothing can get in the way of us being in the best shape of our lives, which trickles down in every other aspect of our lives. We yeah. calendar it and that becomes a priority for us. Right. So for us, it's like I drop the kids off at school. I go straight to the gym. Yeah. Um, and then you and you go to the gym in the afternoons. Yeah. So that really helps putting it on a calendar. Another way, another practical tip would be to just work out together. Right. That's quality time together. Sometimes yeah. we do. I'll skip my morning session and go to the afternoon session with you and work yeah. out with you in the afternoons. Or the Which evening. can it can be fun. And then sometimes it can be annoying. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like. If your spouse is checking out your form um, when you're working um, out or, me, or saying or if your weight is too heavy or you didn't put the neck bar, you didn't put the okay. brace on. And then she's telling your trainer that you should have the neck brace um, on yeah. because your spouse is concerned. Or like, your back, you know, your lower like back that. hurts. So I'm like, that may be a little too heavy for him because I'm not trying to have to feel take like care of you. feel like my mom's in the gym with me <laughs> at that point. Like just trying but to make sure I'm I don't, safe. you come over and check on my form, Anthony. That's you. You're coming over like, oh, you need to do this. And I have a personal trainer as well. He can tell me if the form is off. But yes, if it's if it seems a little too heavy, I'm like, no, he don't need to be lifting that. Yeah, so that's a good one. Okay, like, yes. Act, definitely, quality definitely, definitely quality it's time. It's quality time yes. where you can go work out together, maybe go get a smoothie together afterwards, you know, being consistent with that. Um, another practical tip is if you have kids, then maybe after dinner, maybe you can go out for a 30-minute walk together as a family to keep your, your family and your kids moving. But that's actually, that's a good one, though. Yeah. Not, not even necessarily outside of the gym because mm -hmm. we, a good boutique family gym that can do all around Family fitness. We we do that. Like we bring the girls with us mm -hmm. to work out. So yeah. yes, if you can find a gym where they have a trainer for kids and sure. you can yeah. get mm -hmm. your workout in as well, mm -hmm. like our our gym does have that environment where we have our kids with us. So yeah, yeah definitely a family family fitness is dope. Or after your workout to get your cardio in, yeah, do a quick do walk, walk with walk. your yeah. with your family. Right. And then lastly, I would say another practical tip is just hire a professional. Like we hire so many people to provide leverage in our household, in our businesses, you know, in our life. 
So why not hire someone to help you on your fitness journey and your weight loss journey or weight gain journey, whatever that looks like, whatever you're trying to do with your fitness or just one in a lifestyle to make sure you're eating healthier, hire somebody to do that for you. Hire right? somebody to do that for you. Yeah. I've got just a, the shameless plug for everyone that's watching. <laughs> okay, what is that? Follow Fit Like Anthony mm -hmm. on Instagram. That is my new fitness page. Got a bunch of major things that are coming. Yeah. There's a little light intro to it. Uh, click the link in the bio um, on Fit Like Anthony on Instagram. There's a questionnaire on there. You can start your fitness journey, but definitely some high accountability coming on that side. Mm. But definitely hire a professional. We're doing nutrition and workout plans. Yeah. But hire somebody that can help you. I've been on this journey for over nine years, six of them seriously. Mm -hmm. And out of those six, only the last nine months have I actually yielded the results that I desired. Yeah. Simply because I had a professional. Holding myself accountable to certain things is, is one piece. But when you have to show up and be accountable to someone else and their expectations, mm -hmm. totally different. And what I've accomplished in the last nine months is what I've been trying to accomplish for the last nine years in a difference, again, profession. That's major because I have tapped into Anthony's program and I started last Monday and I was at 156 pounds. And as of today, I'm 149. So it works. It really does. Um, it's making me choose healthier food options. I've never weighed my food before. I'm this weighing chicken. I'm weighing trail mix. I'm weighing everything before I eat it and looking at calories and looking at my watch to make sure I burn more calories than I take in. And it, and it really does work. This is not a paid ad, by the way. None of this is scripted. She just said it. I, I, I'm going to I need to get paid. Let me say Mom, <laughs> drop in the comments what, you, what you're experiencing with yeah, the program. Yeah, so we're me. Jasmine, experience yeah, what yeah. you're going through in the program. So, Steven, experience so, what you're going so through. So I think it's I think it's great, and um, yeah, just having a professional hold you accountable most definitely does work when it comes to your your. And a lot of times you don't want to hear it from your spouse, so having that professional there can they can hear it from the professional. You know, versus hearing it from, I think from that your that's, spouse or significant other. You know, you know what? Like, yeah, because we we tried to work out together where I was Sheikah's trainer. And that didn't go that far. And you hear it from, I mean, I've experienced that not only with coaching you, but even with Chloe, it's the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. they're, you're, you're going to listen to someone that is actually a professional mm -hmm. that is outside of your household a lot easier. Right. For sure. So, yeah, I, I think that if you're a husband out there that's a personal trainer or you're into fitness and your wife's just not listening, time to go get a trainer. Time to call Mr. Accountability. Yeah. But let me tell you, I now that I see that your results are there because you have transformed your body, I am listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was trying to play me before. She was trying to play me. Like, I had to. I had to get the eight pack for my right. wife to believe me. Wow. Like I needed that washboard. I'm like, okay, now, now okay. I, I'm gonna listen. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so you I'm needed listening. some. You needed some social proof. I, I needed visual. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Physical. All proof. right. Awesome. Okay, but yes. Yeah, so those are practical tips. If you guys, we would love to hear more from you. Learn to hear how you're talking to your spouse or significant other about their weight gain or weight loss journey, um, their fitness journey in general. Um, like, put, drop it in the comments. Let us know how you communicate. Yeah, that, Let us know where you're at on your fitness journey in life. Um, and then if you're with someone in a, a relationship, like, how do you all, you know, work that out together? Like, how, do you work out together? Do you work out separately? Who's the trainer? Who's not the trainer? Like, who's holding each other more accountable for food and what they're eating and what they're drinking? Or what are your challenges? Like, what are the roadblocks that prevent you from working out every day? Yeah. I'd be interested to hear those. Like, mm -hmm. what, what are the roadblocks? What's... What's hindering your motivation? Or yeah. what is your motivation? Yeah. Okay. Your big why. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, um, thank you. Yes. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh -huh. And look, remember to like, subscribe, share, and engage. Yes. And remember, keep building and, and stay, stay unstoppable. unstoppable.